Hello, welcome to the Paper Snob. This is Tara. Today I'm going to be working on a 30 days of sketch from March. I didn't get them all done because I spent a lot of time traveling at the end of February and into March. I went on a cruise um, with MK Gunn and Janet Fritz and around 50 other ladies and had a blast. You've seen some of the layouts that I have created using the kit that we received in um, for that cruise. So today I'm going to be working on one of the 30 days of sketches. I'm going to be scrapbooking the photo of my sister and I um, in the evening when we got off the planes, got to the Airbnb, and was able to go get some food. So I'm going to be working on day 10 sketch. On day 10, I was in Idaho, so I didn't get this done before I left, and I just set it aside so that I would have a chance to play with it later. I already had the photo chosen for it, I just didn't get to it. So, And when I got home from Idaho, I jumped back in and tried to get ahead, which I never really did, but that's besides the point. So these sketches for March were awesome and I do want to finish them all. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we're going to get started. All right, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do some ink smooshing onto this background. I'm using the saltwater taffy to put some color on it. This is the Distress Oxide. And this is one of the colors that we used in class on the cruise. And so I've just been pulling them out and using them at home as well as I complete layouts. Now I do believe that the saltwater taffy was the distress ink and not the oxide, but I chose to play with the oxide because I actually just, I prefer them. And so I have a pile of scraps from the cruise kit Actually, I have an entire bag full of scraps still, so I'll be able to probably use up most of them, you know, by the end of this month. Hopefully, I will have this cruise album completely finished. I realized the other day that I haven't scrapbooked not one thing about our time in Jamaica, so that needs to change, and I need to um, slow down on some of the other days because I'm running out of room in my cruise album. How does that happen? Anyway, so I cut this photo mat down to four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and I'm going to distress the edge, and then I'm going to use my walnut stain distress ink to um, ink the edges. Now note that I keep my little ink pads in the bottom of the little um, ink thing. They fit there perfectly, and it stores nicely because I can store it upside down and it doesn't get ink everywhere. I store the little pads on the bottom of my oxides too, but because I have to use Velcro to keep them in there, the ink side is out and it makes a mess everywhere. So I may have to rethink how I store the little pads that go with them. I know my kitty keeps walking across my space. I think that's the last time he does it. And um, so I cut this circle with my Cameo and I had some issues with my Cameo the other day and it cut right through the center of this one. It's not gonna be a big deal. I'll just tuck that piece where it's messed up underneath my photo. But I'm gonna do the same with all of the edges on all of the papers that I use. I'm gonna go ahead and distress them. Then I'm gonna ink them with the distress ink. That is my walnut stain in case I didn't quite say that color. I'm gonna attach my photo to the mat and that part will be done. And now I'm going to um, go ahead and start cutting some of these strips. Now this piece of paper, I'm really reluctant to cut down, but I did anyway. And I'm going to cut it down to, I think it's an inch and a half, and then I'm gonna cut it down to 11. So it'll be about 11, inches long and then I'm going to scuff up the edges with my distress tool as well and ink the edge as well. 
So I was gonna go ahead and just do all of the papers without attaching any of them to the background, but then I realized it would probably just be easier if I went ahead and um, attached them as I go. And so here in a minute, I will pull out that background, which I completed it at the same time as, as I'm going here. So it wasn't really dry yet, but it wasn't actually wet either. So I just decided to go ahead and start gluing things down. It works out just fine. And I'm normally not um, prone to, to putting things on a wet background, but you know, it is kind of what it is. So took this wood grain. This wood grain came from Simple Stories. I believe it's called Vintage Coastal something or another. Um, this was a collection that I did not purchase when it came out, although it is stunning because at the time I had no beach pictures, none whatsoever. I had scrapbooked all of the beach pictures that we had taken during our three and a half years living near Fort Stewart, Georgia, and I just didn't have any left to scrapbook, so I, I didn't buy it, although it's, like I said, it's gorgeous. So here's where I'm going to go ahead and start adhering some things down a little bit just so that I can get things the right size. Now, I, don't, I didn't really measure um, what was on the sketch. I'm just kind of eyeballing things here, trying to decide what's going to work the best where. And so this piece of paper has, as you can see, has been torn. And so I'm just going to go ahead and tear the edges again. And then I'm going to trim it down until I get it to the side. I, I think I end up cutting it at least twice, if not three times, trying to get it to the right size that I want it to be. And I thought that the torn edges just kind of gave um, a little bit more texture and depth to the layout, and which works since one side was already torn. And this was another one of the scraps that was left over and... Actually, I think it was meant to go on one of the pages, but I used the wrong piece, and so I ended up with this piece being an extra, and my goal is to try to use up all of these bits and pieces so that MK and Janet will be proud that I didn't throw anything away. That was their mantra the whole time. Don't throw stuff away. And so I thought I did really well at not throwing anything away, and I still have a huge bag full of stuff. I still have um, the little um, smaller inserts that they created for us to do in the class and I have not created all of those just yet. And so I don't know how much I actually have left over until I finish creating those smaller pages. I created one of them um, today and put some photos in it and I created another one another day. It is the one that I created a few days ago. On one side it has slots for you to put like your sea pass <clears throat> and I put some other bits and pieces and there's I, I took screenshots of um, the like the itinerary and, and stuff like that and I talked to those in the little slots. I'll see if I have a photo that I can stick in here for you so you can see it. Um, and I'm just kind of sticking things in as they go, making sure that I get all of the, the layers that are on the sketch here. I definitely want to, to be able to get all of those beautiful layers on Sarah's sketch onto my layout because I really like this sketch. It's, it's a, a, an amazing sketch. So what I did here is I cut off some pieces and I am going to use the text size of it, side of it, and I'm going to tuck one at the top and another one at the bottom, giving you the illusion that it is one continuous piece when it's not. It's a good way to use scraps, and um, I like that it makes you think that I've got a full piece under there when I don't. So pretty happy with the way things are going right now. I'm going to take this piece of corrugated paper and I'm going to add it in here. She doesn't really have that layer, but 
the corrugated paper was part of the kit and I've been trying to include bits and pieces from the cruise kit on the layouts that I do that aren't done. Like I used Vicki Booten's Where To Next collection on a couple of the layouts. And so I tried to make sure I stuck like a piece of corrugated paper or something in it from the actual cruise kit, just so that we had some of the same things going through every page. And I also tried to stay within the same colors as, as much as possible. So there's a little half circle on that bottom piece and I just used a scrap and my um, punch and that made the, the circle work really well. I have this set of um, phrase thickers. I'm not sure which collection they go to, but um, I decided that I would use, pull my title from this and I, I did... Um, Oh, here we go. Is that going to be the title? It's go is in a larger word. Now, these I just opened and I was kind of annoyed that they didn't stick. I actually had to glue the G and the O several times with wet glue to get it to stay down. And I'm surprised by that because, like I said, I just opened them. They're fairly new. You saw me build this layout. The only things that you didn't see me do is go in and put this little, um, it was a shaker box mix that I made for Scraplift Crafter Noon um, last week. Not yesterday, but last week. And so those are the leftover bits and I hadn't put them back in their container. So I thought I would go ahead and use some of those elements on this layout. I want to thank you so much for coming to my channel today. I really appreciate those of you who take the time to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys are responsible for building my channel. Without you, I cannot do this. I really appreciate all that you do to help me build this channel. I hope that you liked this video and I hope that it inspired you to create your own layout and get your own memories into an album. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Bye.